Hi everybody. Okay, I'm going to do a little video on comparison with three upgrade whips that you would put on your handheld transceivers and uh, what to watch out for and uh, well, what's wrong, uh, what's good and what's bad about them. Um, the top one in the orange is allegedly a Nagoya, which is the ones you really got to watch out for. The NA771s, there are lots of fakes around. Um, I'll explain the differences that I've found anyway. The Prime AL800 is also another dual bander, an extendable one. Um, I'll have to demonstrate that in a bit. And the bottom one, in my personal favourite, is the Diamond SRH771 dual bander upgrade. Um, anyway, I'll put them on the vector analyzer one, one at a time and I'll show you how close they are to the claim frequencies that they say. And then you'll be, you'll be pretty surprised. Anyway, we'll get this done. Okay, right, this is the Nagoya. I don't know if you can actually see that. Not very good at focusing this thing, is it? No. Anyway, there we go. It's a Nagoya NA771 dual bander for 2 meters and 70 sims. And, um... I've got it on the analyzer now, and if we look here, my analyzer is set. Come on, focus, guys. Please. No, okay. Let's try it on there. Right, well, it's between 137.5 and 257.5. So, right in, you know, covering that two meter band, definitely. Now, if we come along here, we will find that it's actually resonant at 208 megahertz. Not even close. So, if we come back up to the two meter band. There we go. And it's six plus. So if I go back to the analyzer, we're on 144.5 with a VSWR of 17 point. Nah, you know, I mean, it's. If I take it away from things, I mean, it's got a lot of stuff around it, but that shouldn't make that much difference. That dropped it to 10. But, you know, I mean, it is shocking. So I'll change that now. to 70 sems uh, 434 will make that and we have an SWR of 15 to 16 so I mean as obviously you can see these things are pitiful <laughs> I'm just checking my connections just to make sure everything's hunky-dory. Yeah. So let's find out where that one's resonant. So if we come down here. Make that 300. All right, won't go any higher than that. That's 257. So that's two five seven two four five seven, and it is again above six. So there's your Nagoya. So I find that with the Nagoyas, with the blue writing, they are frequently fakes. Yeah, get one with the silver writing on it, and they're a lot better. Okay, I'll pop the diamond on now we'll see okay guys right well now we're gonna look at the oh, come on these things are shockingly difficult to focus right i got it from 380 to 480 and look there 
Hang on. Right, it's resonant roughly at 440, which is exactly where it should be. Yeah? Okay, now if we go to 4340, 1.3. Perfect. So then we go, we'll drop that down to the 2 meter band. Bearing in mind there will be some reactants to all the rubbish that's all around me at the moment. Take it away from everything a bit. Not so great on two, on two meters, but there again, there's probably a lot of reactants. Let's take it somewhere where the, it's more in free, free space. Good gracious. I see now the diamond's not even that great on two meters. Very dependent on where exactly you're holding it. So, not that impressive for the diamond on two meters either. Let's see where it's resonant. Right. Sorry about the shoddy camera work, but I'm trying to hold my phone and do this at the same time. So, not so easy. Anyway. If we just put that down to three, I suppose. Then we go here, make that a one, um, make that a one three seven. Make that another one. I have tested this before and it was pretty good, so I don't know what's going on here. But if we move that one up to seven, and according to that gizmo, it is. Oh, that's 137, long on that. I need to change that to a five. There we go. Okay, so now it's showing resonant in a rather different position. But you see the way, like, just be my, by me getting close to it, it is extremely reactive. So, I mean, having it next to your face when you're talking is probably going to have an extreme effect on it. Such is life. So let's find out where it's resonant then. Trying to find any, like, put your hand anywhere near it. Sorry about the blurring, but I've got to try and keep clear of the antenna. But I mean, it's resonant according to this up in the hundred, nearly 160s. But it's all over the place simply because of where it is, you know. But two meters is not particularly reliable on this antenna either, to be honest. I mean, you know, that's me holding it as clear as I can in my shack. And if I increase, let's just increase the span just a little. Make that seven. So we see eight. Okay, so let's find out where that's resonant then. Roughly around 177. Yeah, that's really useful, isn't it? So, and this is a genuine diamond SRH771. And it's that far out. Not good. Anyway, what, what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, there's a lot of these fakes around. Now, Nagoya fakes can be generally spotted by... Um, you know, the blue writing 
the orange bag, which looks very similar to the real one. But anyway, the point is they're only about three or four quid. <laughs> I mean, I bought two of them for six quid, second hand mine. <coughs> so, anyway, yeah, as I was saying, I bought two for six quid, second hand. They're very cheap and they're nearly always fake great for scanners you know if you got yourself uh, one of these get a good scan it bung one of them on there they work really well surprisingly even though they're not particularly resonant on the frequencies but they're pretty good for the bright for the wideband on the scanning uh, I use one of these blue Nagoyas they vary a lot, you know, you put one on the analyzer and it'll be rubbish. Put another one on the analyzer, it'll be a little bit closer. I don't think there's much quality control in these fakes. But anyway, so I've got one here, which I tested uh, on my Baofeng. And it's not that far out on, on both bands. So it's tolerable. But uh, like some of them are appalling. Honestly, they're really, really appalling. And you've got to be careful. If you're paying only three or four quid for a whip... I would suggest that you only use it on a receiver. Um, you want to, even though my diamond, for some reason, my diamond SRH771 is showing some pretty weird results on two meters. I'm not sure why. In fact, I'll put it on another analyzer and we'll see what we come up with. Because that was the vector one, which is generally very accurate. I use it for microwaves and everything. But um, I'm going to try it on my MFJ analyzer, uh, MFJ clone, it's an AW07A by Feature Tech. Same gears mode, just doesn't got the gauges on it. But we'll try that and see what happens there. So be right back. Okay, well, right, I'm back. And I've got the diamond. And it's on the big analyzer now. So we'll just pop that on. I bet I flattened the battery the other night. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, I'm back and I've got my diamond SRH771 on the other analyzer now. So we'll have a look at this one if it if it will allow me to. Uh, I'll turn. I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. You might be able to actually see what it says on the screen then, which you can't. So I'll turn it off. Right, got the backlight on now. Analyzer. Why the hell can't you? Okay, well this is the diamond on the feature tech, and as you can see, it's coming up lovely on the uh, on 70 sams. Let's try it on the two meters. Hmm. And it's rubbish, you see. Look, I mean, you know. And that's the diamond. That's a good one. That is. If I bring it up to about 177, something like that, I think that's where it pe resonance peak. Oh no, it's giving me complete. And mind you, I've got it in a different position from where I had it with the other one. But you can see, I mean, like around the two meter band, uh, even this whip, which is a genuine one, is rubbish. I mean, I'm coming all the way down here. I'm, I'm into the air band before I get into resonance. So, like, you know, 127 megahertz. <laughs> what good's that? But, you know, it is what it is. But this is a genuine diamond. Right. I'm going to put the Nagoya on here and then show you what that does. Right, this one you can't see very well. But it's... I don't know if you can spot that. There we go. 125 megahertz, it's 5.2. This is the Nagoya. So let's go up to the two meter band and see what it's got to say for itself. Uh, it's better than it was on the other analyzer, for some strange reason. But I mean, I've got an enormous amount of adapters in here, which is not going to help matters. But anyway, we're on the two meter band. We've got SWR3, which is pretty rubbish. So let's go to 70 SEMS.
not even a hint of resonance <laughs> until we get up all the way up the 500 and it's still that's as high as it will go like so we have rubbish <laughs> you come back down here and it might show you something no no there we go don't even know what it's doing now no so over 500 megahertz so i mean these things they're rubbish and that's one of the fakes that's a different one that i tested the first time so you've got the comparison of two on two different analyzers two different nagoyas uh, and it's they're they're awful i mean how they like you know don't just don't use them unless you're going to use them on a scanner right this is my rambling video anyway just to give you an idea if you don't own an analyzer just to know what you might be getting um so that diamond srh 771 i've used it to make contacts on the uh, sierra oscar 50 satellite using a bow fang so it does the trick um swr is never going to be brilliant on a handheld whip because you're waving it around you got it in your face and all kinds of like you know but uh it's quite amazing when you put them on the analyzer and you see how bad they really are. Anyway, what? Avoid Nagoyas. I could try this other one, this um, Prime, but it's pretty big. Hang on, I shall come. I shall uh, pause everything and I'll put this Priam on here and just to see. But it's a pretty big uh, antenna for a handheld. Right. Well, I've got this. Uh, what's it called? A Prime AL800. Got one of them on there now. And I mean, it's almost touching. I wish this thing would focus. It is so, so irritating. It really is. Right. It's going all the way up. Nearly touching the ceiling. So, what are we looking at here then? So, right. Try and get it in focus here. Okay, so we're on 300 megahertz and it's 2.9. So, let's go up. Now this could be because of the proximity of stuff, but it don't look too good, does it? And let's go to two meters. Probably due to reactants, but it's close. You know, take it into free space, it'll probably be fine. You know? So that one, actually, from a brand that I've never even heard of. I got it off a friend of mine. Prime AL800. Seems to be, actually, the one that has the winning... The winning performance is quite surprising. There it is, one four, got it at 1.4 there, so let's just bring it up to 144. Oh, come on, focus please. Right, there we go. And let's go up. And it's three. Let's move away a bit. And you can't see it, but it's still floating around the two and a half, which is not good, but better than the other ones. Right, so there we have it. Going from uh, left to right, the uh, Prime seems to be the best performer, certainly around a two, two meter mark, but it's unwieldy, and as you see, it's SMA mounted, so sitting on it's a pretty hefty lump with that sensor load in it as well telescopic to be sitting on top of a little handheld but you know it's it's pretty good sr 771 although i've been getting some peculiar results on it there i've never had any trouble with it and um yeah weird that but uh, i've always thought they were good right anyway but these little beasties the nagoyas silver writing you if I remember rightly, silver writing is the ones that are generally okay, but blue writing, beware. They all come, they, they used to come in yellow bags, orange bags and everything. Um, 
I think silver writing in a yellow bag is a genuine Nagoya. Might be in an orange bag, but watch out for that silver writing. What, like you know, and don't. Unless you're going to use them on scanners, don't buy these blue ones. I mean, I've got two or three of them, but I use them for scanners only. So, uh, all right. Okay, I just thought at the end of this video, I would uh, say a little bit about the analyzers I've been using. This one here, this AAI, is excellent. It really is. I've got one that's got a iffy on switch on it. So I have to push the reset, which is underneath there with a little plastic pen. But apart from that, it works beautifully. Um, so you, you've got your frequency, obviously, and your SWR, which is pretty bad at the moment. <laughs> anyway, it's all there. And if you want the vector diagram, you just click. And there you go. That one highlighted red there is the one that you can access so you press OK and then you can start changing the numbers on it and that's your marker that's where it's mark that's the marker once you've finished editing it you go red and then you can come down to the bottom here which is the beginning of your uh, start of your sweep which is at the moment 137.5 once you've finished editing that then you move on to the then you move on to the next one which is this one here which is the end of the sweep and then you can go back up once you've done that then you go back up you can change it to other things yeah, Z different values right, of course the important one is the VSWR Bing. right so once you've got it where you want it then you go to your marker, highlight that, and then you can change it and see that little tag there. Oh, this focus, focus, gentlemen. Right, there's a little yellow tag there that moves up and down, and it will, that will show you where your resonance frequency is. Great little bit of kit. Can't remember how much they are, but they don't break the bank, and they're worth every penny. And they go right up to 2.5 gigahertz, which is what I want, because I use 13 SEMs on the Q100. Now this little gizmo has got a flat battery. So, let's just pop this in here. Switch it on. Now you can put the backlight on if you want. Right, to get the backlight on that one, you just press it on and then hold that down quick and then you've got your backlight. There we go. Select between HF and UHF and VHF. HF is like that, so you just press analyzer. It's on VHF at the moment. If you want UHF, just press that button and then it's into the UHF band. If you want to go to HF, there analyzer and then you got go up and down the bands like so really nice bit of kit very similar to the uh, one that MFJ makes except the one that MFJ makes costs three times more than this one and it's got two little meters in it which you know, this is good enough I've had this thing Five years, six years, and the only thing I've ever had a problem, I had a problem with that silly, like, it's almost got a like combination lock um, thingamy on it when I got it, which was useless, so I threw that away and put that on instead, and that worked fine. Um, and then it comes with an end type on the top, but... Um, you can always put an end type adapter on it, I thought an SO259 would be far more useful and I was right I do have another analyzer actually which I rarely use I tried to sell it a couple of times without success but that's that gizmo up there that's the Procon 3000 it's a good little vector analyzer for working VHF UHF up to uh, three 
three um, thousand megs, up three gigs. It's not bad actually. But anyway, okay. Anyway, nice to see uh, see everybody again today. Uh, I hope my rambles about antennas makes um, any sense. Yeah. I meant to have a, uh, put this on here ages ago, like, you know, um, my production quality will get better in the future. But anyway, there's the information for you. This Prime, is it? Yeah, Prime AR800. Seems good, but unwieldy. <laughs> but not, it's, it's the best performer uh, for SWR, that's for sure. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff around here that you can react with. Um... Far too unwieldy to put on top of a bow thing, if you ask me. On an SMA, it'll break. Okay, Diamond SRH771, my personal favourite. Although, yeah, uh, it was getting some peculiar readings on it. I've never had any trouble with it at all. And the Nagoya. If you get a real one, you're laughing. Chances are you'll get a fake. And some fakes are good and some are bad. As I say, the one I've got on my... Uh, one I've got on my Baofang here is not too bad at all. But the other one, the other two that I've got, rubbish. <coughs> There's one up there. Yeah. Anyway, M0 and MC saying ta-ta from the Chaos Shack until next time. Catch you later.